While many of us may think of tuberculosis as a health risk of the past, it is still the deadliest infectious disease in human history. And there haven't been many treatment breakthroughs for the past half century. But now a UBC study has found that a compound taken from a North American wildflower could be effective in fighting TB. Darius Madavi joins us now. Darius, explain this flower power, if we can call it that. Oh yeah, great rhyme, Dan. Uh, and I just want to emphasize, in the last couple years, there have been two new drugs developed to treat TB. In the 50 years before that, zero. Even though, with the exception of COVID for a couple years, TB has been the biggest infectious killer every year for over a century. So it's really exciting that new treatments are now being looked at, including right here in Vancouver. This is bloodroot. It's native to North America, mostly Eastern North America, and it's known to have antibacterial properties. And researchers at UBC have now found that a special compound it produces called sanguinarin, which I have practice pronouncing, but still, <laughs> uh, can stop the tuberculosis bacterium from reproducing. They were able to modify the natural compound to make it more potent and less toxic. And the final product inhibits growth of TB by over 90% in the lab even at low doses. Uh, Jim Sun, who led the research, told me a little bit more about what makes this compound special. It can kill TB and some related bacteria, but it leaves, uh, it doesn't harm other beneficial bacteria, such as those you find in your microbiome, because um, a lot of antibiotic use is very uh, harsh on, on the body. Darius, why is tuberculosis so hard to treat? Uh, how much time do you have, Dan? Uh, let's start with the social factors. Uh, TB primarily affects poorer communities with little access to health care. It's rampant in Africa and Southeast Asia, but also in indigenous communities here in Canada. Uh, rates of TB among Inuit people in Canada are 300 times higher than in non-indigenous people born in Canada. So honestly, just getting the treatment to people is half the battle. But then you have the biological side as well. Uh, Mycobacterium tuberculosis, the bacteria that causes the disease, is a tough little guy. It's got a tough uh, barrier of its own, its cell wall, and it can survive dormant for a long time inside your lungs, inside a shield of dead immune cells called a granuloma. When that happens, it's called latent TB, uh, and it's estimated that a quarter of the world's population has a latent infection, just waiting for the right time to strike. And when it does, it can be nasty, not just the disease itself, but also the treatment. It takes six months on four drugs to cure just a standard TB infection. And that can jump to two years if you have a drug resistant strain. And as Sun told me, that's a growing problem. But we need more, I think it's not enough. Um, a lot of those drugs are also very toxic um, and there are already developing resistance even against these new drugs. So it, it's always, um, kind of tug of war, right, between the bacteria and, and what you can make. So I think drug resistant will always be a problem. So right now we're kind of just um, putting a Band-Aid on it and trying to make more. One of the really exciting things about this drug is that it's able to target even aggressive and drug resistant strains of TB. And where most current drugs only work if the bacteria are actively dividing, this one even works against dormant tuberculosis. And Darius, the study found that this blood root compound can fight TB in a test tube. How effective would it be in people? Uh, it's too early to say anything concrete, uh, but some said that early studies in mice have been promising. Uh, drug development can be notoriously glacial, uh, so it's unlikely we'll see this being used clinically for at least a few years. But honestly, the fact that it's being investigated at all is really promising, especially for a disease that has been almost completely neglected for decades. Darius Madavi, science and climate specialist. It's always interesting. Thanks very much. Thank you.